Hi viewers, in this video I will show you how I replace the rear brake pads and rotors on my Volvo S40 2007. First to begin the job, I place the car on a leveled surface with the transmission in park position. For safety, I block the opposite wheels with the wheel chocks. Before jacking up the car, I used the breaker bar to loosen the lug nuts on the wheel that I had to work on. They were unscrewed around a quarter of a turn. For extra safety, when the car is lifted up, I always use one or more jack stands. I removed the wheel only when the working area was secured. I began by removing the caliper retaining spring with a flathead screwdriver. The following step was to remove the end caps to be able to access the caliper guide pins. To unscrew the guide pins, I used a ratchet with a 7mm X bit socket. The two guide pins must be unscrewed and pushed out with a flat head screwdriver to ease the removal. With this type of rear brake system, the mechanism prevents the piston from being retracted. The caliper has to be pried out and lifted to remove the brake pads. To avoid damaging the caliper assembly, I always hang it with a small bungee cord. When the caliper was secured, I used a big ratchet with a 13mm socket to loosen the two caliper bracket retaining bolts. A breaker bar can be used if the two bolts are too difficult to unscrew. To unscrew the lower bolt, I used a universal joint because the space was too tight. The rest was done with a small wrench. When the caliper bracket was removed, the rear left rotor was free to be removed. The rotor was not that old, but with the snow in the salt on the street during winter, up north the rotors are rusting quite fast. The hub and bearing assembly was in good shape and only needed to be cleaned with a file and a wire brush. To prevent the rotor from seizing on the hub assembly, I applied a coat of anti-seize. The new rotors that I bought didn't need any decreasing before the installation. I also used two temporary lug nuts to keep the rotor in place, so later it was easier to install the brake components when the rotor was in position and not moving. To make sure the new brake pads would move easily, I cleaned the contact surfaces on the caliper bracket with a file and a wire brush. To slow down the rusting process and lubricate the pad contacts on the caliper bracket, I applied a small coat of brake lubricant. After that, the bracket was reinstalled. The torque for the two bolts was set to 52 foot-pounds. When this type of rear brake piston is expanded, it needs a special procedure to be retracted in the caliper. Before performing this procedure, the brake fluid level in the reservoir must be checked to prevent any spillage. I checked the level during the procedure and I kept it between the minimum and the maximum marks. Refer to owner book for details. To contract the piston into the caliper, brake piston tools or long nose pliers can be used. Since the Volvo brake piston adapter is not common, I'll show how to make a cheap one. The only part that I needed was an old 16mm socket. It took me around 5 minutes to cut it and test it. Before retracting old caliper pistons, I checked to see if there was any corrosion around the bead. I cleaned it and I lubricated it with a little bit of brake fluid to prevent the rubber boot from twisting during the rotating operation. During the complete operation, the brake fluid level must be kept between the minimum and the maximum levels. Brake fluid can be dangerous. For more details, refer to the owner's manual and the instructions on the brake fluid bottle. Brake fluid should be disposed according to local regulations. To retract the piston, I used my custom-made adapter with a ratchet and a small extension. Holding the caliper with one hand, I used the other hand to press and rotate the piston in clockwise direction until the piston was completely retracted in place. This added more space to install the brake pads. Note, some people open the bleeder valve to discharge the old brake fluid when depressing the piston to avoid possible contaminated fluid to flow back into the ABS actuator. With the caliper ready, I installed the brake pads in place as shown. Then, with the proper spacing, the caliper was positioned without any problem. The two guide pins were inserted and secured on the caliper bracket. The torque for the pins was set to 22 foot-pounds. 
The two end caps were reinstalled to protect the guide pins from dirt and humidity. I pumped the brake pedal to compress and adjust the brake pads on the rotor. I also checked if the handbrake was working fine. The job was ok and I removed the temporary lug nuts. I installed a new caliper retaining spring provided with the new brake pad kit. Finally, the wheel was installed. The jack stand and the jack were removed. The lug nuts were tightened and the torque was set to specs. The brake job on the other side of the car should have been the same, but there was a new problem. I found out that the parking brake cable was completely stuck because of the rust. As you noticed, I cannot plan everything before a job. This is why I was not expecting to have to replace the parking brake cable on the right side of the Volvo. 